Before I start painting the camouflage, I need to do some fiddly bits, like the fuel tanks, the edge bars, and I am also going to improve the threads on the wheels. Stay tuned! How is it going mates? Let's start with the external fuel tanks. These are pretty ok out of the box, but since Edward added quite a lot of photo edge for them in the set, I will add it, although I am not very sure if it is necessary. The assembly cannot be less complicated, however when you account for the photo edge it starts to look more like a build on its own right. To make things a bit easier I will assemble the photo edge pieces on the sticky side of a piece of masking tape. Thin CA glue will do the bonding here. Most of the tools and materials I use you can find linked in the description. Big part of this assembly process will be to establish some guidelines. Otherwise, there is no reference point from which I can approximate the position of the details. I have no idea how I am going to handle those tanks without knocking most of the parts off. Now let's turn our attention to the wheels. They have some grooves but they are very soft and shallow. So using my scribing scalpel I will carefully deepen the existing grooves, applying almost no pressure. Next I will enlarge the grooves with a razor saw. I think that my saws are not very suitable for this job. I will need to invest in a larger one. After a little bit of sanding, I will clean up and smooth out the surface with Mr. Cementes. I think it looks good with a layer of surfacer. Well, there is not much assembly, there is quite a lot of painting on the edge bars. First I will apply a layer of LP11 silver from Tamiya on the tips of the cones. Then to mask the silver I will dip the cone in masking liquid. Tamiya made large enough panel lines so they can serve as a barrier and creating a sharp transition is easy. Next I will apply yellow for the band that is behind the silver cone. By the way, silver is one of the best, if not the best base for yellow and red.
Later I decided to extend the yellow further back as it will be a nice base layer for the next color. The third color is going to be Olive Drop Light Base from AK. After removing the masking liquid, the rockets start to look interesting. I masked, I masked everything painted so far with masking tape. And next I will apply the light grey color on the body of the rocket. The wings of the model are going to be folded, so the rockets are going to be quite a prominent feature. That's why I am going to spend more time weathering them. First I will distress the grey paint using very diluted darker grey, which I will apply using a sponge. The same thing I am going to do with the olive drop, but this time with lighter version of the base color. As you can see on these before and after pictures, the effect is not very dramatic, but brings the rockets to life. To enhance the visual separation of the mounting bracket, I will paint it in grey that's lighter than the base color of the rocket. I will use the same color to highlight the edges of the fins. Another step in the same direction will be outlining the bracket with pencil. Will have its metallic sheen, but it will go away after I apply varnish over it. Not looking at the instructions, I totally missed that there are stencils and I varnished the rockets with satin varnish. I was even thinking that it would be nice if Tamiya have included such decals. Silly me. Now I have to apply gloss varnish where the decals will be and then I will apply the decals. It is funny how much a simple decal with unreadable letters can transform a detail in terms of realism and visual attractiveness. Now I will apply another layer of satin varnish, this time for real. The last thing that I need to add to the rockets are the cables, but I think that it will be more appropriate to do it when I install the rockets on the wings, which will happen in another episode. Thank you for watching this one until the end. Don't forget to check out the rest of my videos. And until next time, happy modeling!